This was a sketch that uh, George Winter did. Um, he was an Indiana artist uh, in the 1800s. He uh, was known to our people. He extensively documented um, Potawatomi's, Miami's, and, and uh, um, painting form. And uh, the cool thing about his paintings was they were pretty much historically accurate. He didn't uh, embellish us with more feathers or add tattoos or anything to make us look more exotic. He just kind of painted us how we were. And I think that's what's kind of awesome about this particular sketch is that you can see that some of them were in traditional clothing and some of them are actually just wearing uh, what would be considered street clothing at that time. In his journal about this sketch, he actually talks about how uh, there was actually non-natives that were participating also, um, which is kind of true of how our powwows are now. Um, you know, pretty much all walks of life are usually welcome to come and watch and participate. In order to understand our culture, you have to have that knowledge of, of the language. And like I said, how language changes your mindset when you're learning, you see more of how the culture, how the culture works and how our ancestors thought. Um, so you can't have one without the other. You, in order to have culture, you have to have the language that communicates that culture. Without the language, you know, the, the culture would struggle. And without the um, traditions and the culture, there would be no use for the language. Yep, so you're gonna trace it, but then flip it over and trace it. So it's, so it's big like that, right? You're good though, you don't need to recut this. And I'm gonna keep this pattern because this I think is a good pattern. It can be taken down to a smaller size. Yeah, that looks cute. These are a cute little mock and those will stay on someone's foot too. And if they got a skinny foot, they can put a little sole in it. Everything that we have are gifts from our ancestors, our traditional knowledge, our language, our ceremonial doings that they had to do in secret for a long time because it was illegal for them to do so. And so partly it's a responsibility, but the other part is that it's an epistemological framework for um, resiliency, tackling new problems with our ancestral wisdom, their tools, frameworks, and so by honoring the past and those teachings, it makes us resilient to face new problems. There was coming a time when the community, I think, was uh, at a cat's whisker of losing who we were. You know, the federal recognition is kind of the glue that holds the community together. Uh, we were being denied our Indianness by other peoples, non-native and native because we weren't federally recognized, which was extremely frustrating. And so this professor from Notre Dame talked about another way, which was to have uh, an act by Congress. So almost 60 years exactly uh, from the time that we'd had our recognition taken away, it was restored to us. And that has meant the rebirth of a nation, really rebuilding a, a, a nation. Uh, and all the things that go into that. Hi everybody, my name is Madeline. Um, I am Pokagon Potawatomi um, Turtle Clan and I come from St. Joseph, Michigan. Um, and I wanted to say first, miigwech, thank you everybody for coming and for the long walk that we have ahead of us today. Um, it's really exciting to see so many people who are non-native come out and listen to indigenous voices and our stories and to engage in that meaningful discourse with us in a really good way. I had a great time this week getting to know all of you and spending time with you, your great group of youth. I did want to remind all of our friends here that we're a tribe and that we're all family and that we should always be supporting each other. So that means saying good things to each other, helping each other out, and just being nice to each other because again, we're all family. Uh, at your age, right? Uh, you, you are a treasure to this community as you have so much potential. Right? You can bring so much to us, right? But the elders are a treasure to this community because they have done so much, they have seen so much, they have lived so much, loved so much, hurt so much, learned so much. And so when we have a chance to, to hear our elders speak to us, I really want everybody to see how important that is because they won't always be there. 
and while they have the teachings and they're here to teach them and share them with you. I want you all to understand how important that is and just really, really enjoy that and respect that and take that in. So now I just got done pounding the growth rings off this black ash tree. It's a hardwood tree that lives in the wetlands. Uh, it can do just about anything. Uh, I, I can ask it to, to perform maybe a hundred different things and just knowing what to do with it is uh, key. What does it mean to be Bodewadmi? Well, it means, means to means to truly be yourself, you know? To, to look into say, to say what raised me, what people raised me, and go truly understand what that means. I mean, it means, go, means more than just going to Powell. It's, it's how you live your life. It's an everyday existence of the seven grandfather teachings. I mean, it's truly incorporating the lessons that your ancestors, your moms, your dads, your grandparents, those lessons that they give to you and incorporating them wholly into your being. That's what it means to be Bodhiwadmi. And I don't think that change will, that meaning will ever change. It's, that's always what it's going to be. Learning what you have from your, your seven generations behind you, what they have given to you, and giving that back to the seven generations in the future.